All right. Good morning. Let's jump over here. Let's see. How is the audio level? Music might still be a little loud. Let's check that really quick. One sec. That sounds good. All right. So. Hello. <laughs> good morning. Happy Sunday. Uh, what are we doing today? Well, I have a vague idea because uh, I was actually sitting here thinking about uh, Gloaming Telegram, this project that I've been working on for the last um, little over seven months now. And um, it seems that almost every stream we're waiting on the build process and we're waiting on you know all these different microservices and when i when i started out on this this project um it wasn't really clear to me how many different languages i might use and kind of how the project would grow or how it wouldn't grow and uh, i thought it would be interesting to try to just focus on having little api backend services for each kind of function and so, as you can see here in Docker Desktop, there are lots. There's one for kind of our Open, a a open AI uh, API. We got CRUD API. We got all the, all these different things. And um, yeah, it's it's, it's it's quite a number of things, and it it seems to be. Um, Maybe not really worthwhile at this point. Now, it's one of those things where there's a trade-off, right? We're gonna have more flexibility to, um, is that really true though? Thinking, thinking about this, right? So we're already using Nginx as a, uh, a proxy in front of everything. So if we wanted to stitch in a different service, right in one part of the API, that's easy enough to do uh, regardless. So do we really get anything by having these broken up into separate services that are separate crates? Uh, I don't know, I, I, I don't know that we do other than perhaps like if we needed different versions of dependencies for different things, uh, I think the real story would be in a, in a in a different context, right? In a, a like, if this was a piece of software being developed at a company or by a team of individuals, there might be something to be said for that, for having like, oh, here's this service and that service, and they can be developed independently, and you just maybe have some documentation, you have an API specification or something. But here and now, it's just me working on this. Although I see, I see. Uh, we, we got some stars, we're up to nine stars on this project as of today. Um, so some people, are there, are there watchers? No, me and one other person. Okay. But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. So I think it feels like probably the, uh, the right time would have been in the past, but, uh, I think it'll be good to kind of look at consolidating all of these different microservice APIs into one. Uh, and so I've I already started that, which is why it's like, let, let me just go live because uh, I could I could work on this on stream. Why not? Um, I do know that the last couple of months, I think I've been starting a, a little like at 830 my time. But uh, whatever, let's uh, get started on this. Do this uh, on stream. So what is this? So basically what I did was it felt like the um, the CRUD API was the biggest one, right? It's the thing that had the most endpoints, uh, had the most going on. So I renamed CRUD API to, to API. Uh, so this is gonna be somewhat of a, a bottom up reorganization. So um, there's still like the Docker 
set up stuff and uh, Nginx that needs to be done to clean things up. But basically what I've said is uh, in the, so previously, let me go back to um, main.rs, there we go. So previously the CRUD API didn't have any, like its state struct was empty. So I've already added the stuff from the AI API into this. And uh, previously what the routes were for the, in the HTTP endpoints for the API were all slash records, slash records, slash streams, slash records, slash video clips, so on and so forth, right? So all of the, cr um, CRUD, so, you know, create, retrieve, update, delete endpoints. So what I have done here is I know that the Nginx proxy is, is wrapping everything under API. I think that's true. Let me, let me double check that. Um, Nginx. Yeah. Right. So we, Yeah, so what we do typically is we rewrite the URL to strip off API and then just pass slash records. And then for these other services, we might strip off other things. So my, my goal in adding these nested routes um, in our main API service is to essentially handle uh, all of this without any need for rewrites. So essentially what we've been simulating uh, in Nginx configuration, I'm gonna implement uh, and just start moving everything from all the separate folders into here. Uh, another consequence of that is that once we had started uh, making multiple services, I extracted out this common API lib. So all that stuff is gonna get merged back in to API at this point, because there's not gonna be anything else that uses it. Uh, when we're done with this, um, I don't wanna call it a refactor. We don't really have any unit tests or anything for any of this, because uh, I guess I've been kind of uh, <laughs> lazy in that regard. And just like, this this feels very much like a prototype to me, uh, a prototype that I've been working on for half a year, but still it's, just me throwing things together and exploring, getting back into Rust, learning Axum, figuring out what this application is going to be. And just, you know, it's been very casual for me, just a little bit of time here and there. Um, for good or for ill, there, there, there aren't any unit tests. So um, I don't wanna really call it a refactoring because to me, Refactoring is something that's tied to kind of that TDD style having unit tests uh, approach. So I'll call it a reorganization. Kind of the what I'm expecting here is that at the end of this, we're gonna have a front end folder. We'll probably still have this diesel CLI folder because I'm using this to um, uh, interact with the database from the command line. And we'll have a task worker but all these other under, all of these underscore API uh, things will go away. I think this Twitch bot is just a uh, leftover folder because that that's from a, a branch that I've I've not merged. So this is just the unchecked and stuff. Um, and then common API lib will go away. So the the only things that'll be here will be API, front end, and um, task worker. It's kind of what I'm expecting, kind of the outcome of this to be. Okay, so I've already started uh, in what was CRUD API, now API. Uh, I've added uh, all of these all of these imports effectively, and I've moved or I copied the database file from Common API Lib back into API, and I've started to essentially what we're doing here is we're going to take all of the things that are uh, app state, like each of these little microservices has maybe empty, but maybe some um, 
fields in their app state structs. So I'm going to merge those all in together into here. Um, and all of the kind of how, how are we getting that state information? And then adding uh, their routes nested inside of here, right under uh, under API. So we already have records in chat. Um, debating whether I mean I don't I don't need this app.nest here, right? I could just put slash API in front of each of these, but I I think I'll leave it like this. This is kind of nice. I think this works. I've not actually tested this. I did a little bit of Googling. Like how do you do nested router things in Axum and that those kind of uh, eventually I found some stuff that indicated this this would be a thing. And nest is is implemented and it takes a router, so that might be correct. Uh, regardless, oh, and I guess the other thing worth pointing out as part of this is that the car the top level cargo.toml, uh, I changed to kind of reflect the end state um, because this was throwing off like uh, Rust Analyzer and stuff because it was referring to uh, other things that I've already started uh, uh, messing with. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go service by service and try to bring in all the things. So I've already moved the handler file for the AI API, I've already moved this code, I've already moved this code, uh, and I've already grabbed all of the dependencies to make things happy. Uh, one thing that might break is that I did version bump uh, OpenAI Dive when I brought it into API, so that might break it. Uh, we'll probably see if that happens when uh, everything gets built. So I'm going to delete this folder. All right, so that's one service down. Um, we'll skip over, we'll address common API lib. I think I have most everything. Um, let's, let's go ahead and uh, bring this over. And yeah, we're just gonna bring this as well. And structs. I already have a structs file, so that works. And hey, Justice. It's been a while since I've seen you around. Good evening to you. It's a morning for me. How are you doing? It has been a while. Uh, and we have this task.rs that has some stuff in it. Looks like a wrapper around request. Huh. Uh, doing great? Good, good, good. What am I working on? Uh, so this is... I, I'm i trying to think uh, how long it's been, actually. But th this is... Um, a project that I, I call Glowing Telegram. Uh, well, I, I used the random name generator from uh, GitHub, but uh, it is a open source project, uh, HGPL3, that uh, is for uh, managing stream recordings. Yep, yep, it's a random, random name, Glowing Telegram. Yep. Yeah, 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 you know, if you go, if you go, uh, to GitHub, and you just like, hey, I want to create a repository, new repository, uh, and then there you go. How about Studious uh, Fish Stick? And you click click that again. Uh, or do you have to refresh? I thought you used to be able to just click this and it refreshed it. Supreme Parakeet, never use that. Yeah, naming things is hard, right? Especially if you're not really sure where the project's gonna go. There you go, Jub Jubilant Couscous could be a project. Uh, anyway, uh, but the idea is that this this is um, mostly Rust. Is this decided at random? Sure, I mean, you can rename it later. Um, 
but it, it, it does all these things. And, and basically the idea is that like I, I can take my local recording of streams and I can do speech to text and I can do like AI stuff, summarization. Um, and mostly what I've used that for right now is to quickly cut streams into chunks to upload to YouTube and then like generate like the video description and title. Uh, and it, you know, it's a very, it has a very basic like CRUD, um, using this, uh, library slash framework called react admin for the front end. And so like it provides most of the UI for this and then you can click in and you know, then I have like a, a custom like modal thing here where you can like, here's the, the transcripts and you can tell it, yeah, go ahead and start. And this interacts with, uh, I use Leptos. Leptos. Never heard of it. Um, clearly I have because I've been here before. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, this is, this is coming back to me. Yes. Interesting. So does this compile to JavaScript? I no, I don't have this tab open. Well, I'll look at this later. Yeah, well, yeah, it's Rust. Yeah, yo, I mean, I can see that it's Rust. <laughs> it might be challenging to use something like this and then interact with something like React Admin. Maybe not. Is this, oh, I see. So you can even, hmm, interesting. Okay, well, I'll have to look at that. I uh, I really like TypeScript, honestly. Um, I think I said in a, in a stream in the past that um, if, if I worked, if I did this project again, I'm not going to say, oh, if I did it again, I would do it with TypeScript, but I will say that, um, it, it would have been much faster <laughs> for me to do stuff, uh, that way, uh, Node.js and TypeScript and, and JavaScript, just because, um, I know a bunch of stuff there. What slows me down in Rust? Uh, lack of knowing Rust. I, I did one Rust project. Uh, I have a, a Rust library called, um, uh, it has a really boring name, um, linear assignment in Rust. So it's a um, Kun Monkrez linear assignment solver uh, that I ported. Uh, oh, you've been here. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I started this nine years ago and I knew a little bit of rust then, and then nine years happened. And so the past, yeah, I didn't so much, uh, rust back in web back and stuff. Now that I'm probably faster than rust than TS. Yeah, that's fair. Um, like these streams are the only, only time I'm doing anything in rust really. Um, I mean these days, because I'm more of an, uh, uh management role, I'm, I, I still do a little bit of coding but it's not uh, most of what I do. Uh, but when I was, it was mostly TypeScript. Um, so yeah. All right, uh, but right now what I'm doing is I'm reorganizing everything because I kind of regret uh, at this point, creating like a dozen different microservices that are separate Rust crates in this project. Uh, and I'm merging everything back into one API um, service. Well, I'm gonna cough. Okay. Um, right. So I think I still want this. I don't. I don't even know. Is there a find go to references? No. Want to take a look at how I organize one of the biggest Rust projects I'm working on for inspiration? Uh, sure. 
I could take a look. Okay, I think I did already grab everything out of this file. Uh, you should be able to put a link. I'm assuming it's like, uh, is it a open source project, something on GitHub that you can link to? All right, cool. I'm gonna bring this over here. And then I think, um, let me just double check here that we have everything in here that's in the other one. Okay, so comma API lib had Axum. Of course we do as well. Certi, certi JSON, Tokyo. We did have it. Ah, it's up there. Okay. I'm also checking for like features that we have the same feature set for things. Uh, like tower HTTP, yes, dot envy, uh, workspace dependencies. So does that, are you referring to this, this sort of thing? Because I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm not listing dependencies here. <laughs> Like in the same case, you just use axiom.workspace equals true. Oh, that would make this slightly less painful. Yes. This, that, that would have made things slightly less painful. Um, the other reason I'm kind of consolidating things is just because of build time. So like my dev environment is just, uh, we do that in the project I liked. Um, just the amount of time. Docker Compose takes to set up stuff. Ooh, evolutionary algorithms. A Rust framework supporting a variety of EC tools. Interesting. Yep. Unhindered EC. Uh, simple but pretty flexible. Bit string genetic algorithm in Rust. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I actually have some little pet uh, genetic algorithm projects in my uh, GitHub too. They're like front end, like just run it in the browser uh, things. And very, very bare bones. More of a, you give it the JavaScript to run <laughs> sort of the thing and it evals it. Oh yeah, issues have have labels. Ooh, that that's, that's interesting. And they all have labels. That's, that feels like the hard part. <laughs> or are you saying you add the, all the labels to the issues? All right, so how's this organized? So presumably there is a cargo toml, a workspace, members exclude, interesting, workspace.package. So is this describing the whole workspace then? And then workspace dependencies. Interesting, interesting. Ah, Criterion. Uh, I'm, my linear assignment project uses Criterion, I think. This is like a benchmarking thing, isn't it? Somehow I remember that after nine years. Yep. Uh, so this is cool. And then you have packages. Yeah, and in, in this project, I just have like folders at the top level. Which is funny because like when I do kind of the mono repo, mono repo style setup for like Node.js project, like a, a, not even Node specifically, but you know, a, a JavaScript TypeScript project, I'll do like packages and then st have stuff under there. So I don't know why I didn't do that for this. Other than that, I think when I started, I didn't know that I was gonna have a bunch of services like that. That was kind of a day two decision. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see, EC Core. Cargo Tommel. Version Workspace True. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know you could do this. Dependencies. Okay, so you still list the dependencies of the dependencies for this um, this crate, but then you just reference the workspace. Oh, but you can sp specify specific features. Okay, could be good. Does that just override what the workspace says, or does it add to the version is centrally managed to the workspace? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that has definitely been an issue, um, sort of. Um, I think specifically because I have that common API lib uh, crate. So if I update the version of Axum there and I don't, not, I'm not quite sure about how the, the features thing interacts that. Uh, I'm guessing it just overrides it. I think that would have to be how it would work with, with you know, lacking additional syntax. Um, but yeah, I, I still feel like I want to keep on doing what I was going to do with, uh, like centralizing things just to make it a little easier to, uh, to manage. Yeah. So if you move it, you only need the file. Yeah. Um, and that's going to leave me essentially with two crates in this workspace because there'll be the, the task worker. Um, and then the API. Uh, so I think after we're done with the refactor, maybe I can remember to uh, do that version consolidation between the, the two. That might be good. Okay, so basically what I want to do, because I'm going to be deleting this cargo file. Are you using the pedantic and nursery clippy lens? See, now I feel like I got to open here that linked project again. Is that something that was in here? <laughs> uh, is that, is there a clippy tommel? No. Uh, rest. But where would I find that setting? Cargo Tomo mainly. Okay. In the workspace. Ooh, yeah. Workspace lens clippy. Have priority of negative one to ensure the individual lens override them if present. So. Interesting. Level deny. What does level deny mean? Hold on. Deny means it's an error. Okay. Interesting. Warn is a warning. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, but you know. Typically, you would think that the, the level would be error or something. Uh, forbid is an error you can't allow, right? So I could do something just like, like that. Okay, so um, let's do this. You know what? what? What could be easy? Right now, I just want to consolidate the dependencies over to the right. So if I just do this, is everything errored? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna assume that's good. And then uh, I'm gonna delete common API lib. Okay. And then the next service. I'm guessing I don't have regex in API. There we go. 
Okay, so... There's also a Force Warn or something. Not quite sure of the name. It's a warning you can't uh, allow. Oh, it's a warning. Oh, I see. So instead of it being an error that you can't disable via that macro, it's a, a warning that you can't disable. I see. All right. So think about how I want to do this. Um, we're going to create... So for the all the CRUD stuff, I ended up creating separate files, one for each handler. Uh, config stuff above with the inverse. Uh, probably, yeah. Do you have feedback about this? <laughs> Figment to be really nice for that. I see. Figment. Uh, let's do crates.io. Rather than just Googling Figment, which I think will not be... Uh, <laughs> Configuration library, so con free, it's unreal. Interesting, what does that mean? Figment is a semi-hierarchical configuration library for Rust. Okay, struct package, start config. Merge. Huh, interesting. Okay, let's um, go back to the project and I'll put that on the uh, on the backlog. Put it to the top so that it doesn't get lost in the <laughs> the ocean of things to do. There we go. Basically, you write a derived serialized struct, and then you can use the env provider, which is parts to kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, um, you can define your um, config, and then uh, as, as structs that might be nested, something like that, and then you can, it can be deserialized from different sources. So actually, one of the things I'm doing specifically, I'm not sure this is a use case that supports, is, well, I guess it's fine. Like the uh, some of the like four secrets, the environment variables are file paths. And then I'm using, um, uh, what is it called? <laughs> uh, 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 I don't know, whatever it is. Ba, ba, ba. Is it is it inside of the um, redact to wrap the secret that I read from the file? I don't suppose this supports anything like that. Figment file provider adapter. If Redact implements sturdy deserialize, it should work. Yeah, I don't know. I bet you could probably probably make something that uh, integrates with this and kind of just works out of the box, maybe. You can also write a small of this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, I will look at that later. Yeah. Okay, so. 
just a to serialize with yeah so things I need to do I think what I'm gonna do is um, I guess I'll create no 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 worries uh, thank you though for mentioning helpful things it's good to take note of that so we can and go back and clean things up and make things simpler. Um, just trying to decide whether I want to bother. I think I'm just going to create one file. I'm not going to, like these other ones, there's like, you know, half a dozen or more uh, separate handlers for, for the card API stuff. But I think for these, I'm just going to create a uh, silence detection. RS. This will be where the handlers go for this. Uh, probably a part of getting faster with Rust back and stuff is also knowing which libraries. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So we're going to grab our handlers. Um, and these need to now be pub. You know, it's, it's faster than scrolling down a bunch. One would be just folding it. <laughs> and two would be uh, maybe using the outline. Okay, and then I need in mod.rs. Silence detection. Yep, and then we're missing a bunch of uses. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, we didn't add those other files to um, this. I personally like to use Axiom Extra with the typed path feature for my handlers. Interesting. Let's see. What, uh, what files am I missing here? Media and Surrey. And structs. And task. All right, it eventually got there. <laughs> Still a couple errors. We're missing an app state. We app state doesn't implement std format debug. Well, we can fix that. Okay. Um. So now there's a bunch of stuff that I need to bring in. Hmm. Yeah, just looked it up. Surdy has a or react a redact has a Surdy feature, so it should be pretty straightforward to combine. Okay. Uh, let me let me take a note here in this that uh, And you were saying something about Axum Extra. The use.env line is uh, useless. Yep. So 
So extra utilities. How about documentation? So you're talking about uh, typed path. Where is that? Routing? Oh yeah, sure. That makes sense. Do we... Do we have... Yeah. Okay. Probably wanted to derive macro docs. Yeah, it... So I, I get that this is like generated documentation, right, from comments and source and then, you know, what whatnot. Um, and I, I guess that's good. It just feels kind of backwards to me. It's like, okay, well, how do I figure out how to use a thing? Uh, especially as someone who is, uh, well, more experienced with Rust now than six months ago, but still. Interesting. Huh. scroll down using derived type path I think that's where I just was this one so I guess the question is what does this do like what is this doing in context of like a handler why would I want to do this <laughs> You'll make me a super... Okay. Well, in the meantime, let's keep on uh, on this. Uh, okay, so... Things I need to do. Right, so I'm going to manipulate app state here. Uh, we're going to change it around. So we're going to add some stuff to it. Where is, hold on, hide handlers. Where is app state defined again? Oh, in state, of course. So, I, hmm, how is this gonna work? I guess this API base URL and task API URL are kind of, I can keep them. I don't have to reach. I don't have to change how all that works right now. It's going to be kind of like it pointing to itself somewhat. But one of the objectives in this reorganization is that all of the routes are the same. They're just in one service. So I think that'll be fine. Having things called noise and duration are not so helpful from a uh, what are these for perspective, but uh, I'll leave them for now and we can refactor later. Um, all right, 
So continuing this. I guess what I can do is I can, if I just take all of this, logic. Can I just do that? Now it's not great. Uh, but this is all gonna go away once we figure out how to use figment. So that'll get the job done for the moment. And then, did I get all of these structs in the, uh... I feel like maybe I didn't. I got detect input and detect segment. I think for right now, I'm just gonna bring these over as well. That should make this happy. Ah, except those things are private. Let's make everything public for now. All right, no more errors. Great. Some warnings. <laughs> Uh, are never read. Really? What does that warning mean? Oh yeah, where's the name? So the in the um, in the cargo tomel, I think we're still calling this CRUD API. Let me rename this. Aha! You have a link for me. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. It is a Rust playground. So, Axum Extra, Typed Path, Axum HTTP Status Code. So we have a, a Pokemon path. You got a Typed Path, you have... Uh, this would... Mm, excuse me. This would complain if there was an ID in the path, so you can't accidentally make a mistake in not parsing or defining a path param. Okay. And so you have our uh, handler. Get Pokemon. Takes a Pokemon path. Okay, and you use type to get on the route. Ah, here you don't respecify the path, so it stays next to the handler. I see. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I think I often do... I suppose there are things where I'm, you know, getting things from the path. Um, let's, let's find an example of that. Not here, <laughs> but in the CRUD API. Uh, in fact, I think, I think I'm done with this. Yeah, this is now migrated, so that, 
it's just gonna go away. Goodbye, silence detection API. So if we were to look at uh, maybe get one. Right, so right now I'm just using this path, record ID. So instead I could define a struct. And actually explicitly uh, have the path for this handler here. And that would be more type safe with the struct. Yeah. I. I feel like in a TypeScript project, I would be enabled <laughs> and I'd be much more inclined to have um, more reusable handler functions or I might take a more functional approach that I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. It's just kind of, um, it, it doesn't necessarily fit my mental model <laughs> to have the definition of the handler tied directly to the, the route. Yeah. You just use unit structs. Like having one file where all the routes is defined and having separate files that have functions that implement um, those endpoints feels right to me. But I think that's probably just, you know, an artifact of kind of my history in developing things. Uh, I don't need to find, yeah, read that. Okay. Keep the path and handler together. I, I get why you'd want to do that. It is kind of anyway if you use state and path and query as extractors. Yeah, I guess that's true. I'm just trying to think are there circumstances? where you would reuse this, this like literal handler in multiple places and probably not. Uh, I think that's probably just an abstraction issue. Like if I have logic that I want to reuse, it shouldn't be here. It should be in a function that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thinking about it a little bit more. Yeah, that probably doesn't make sense. And so it does make sense that, hmm. So here's here's a con, right? So one thing, um, and this is actually also a problem with how the project is and I'm migrating away from, uh, you don't need split the explicit content type return. Um, are you talking about the into response? Oh no, you're talking about here application JSON. Yeah. Yeah, probably true. Yeah. 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 I figured out what you meant eventually. Um, but one downside of how things are set up in this project right now and what I'm migrating away from is the fact that like, if I go into um, main.rs, which maybe I don't necessarily want this here, but I can see, Hey, look at here, are all the routes. I can see it in one place in the code. Um, but this is not everything, right? Because now currently what I'm migrating away from is it being distributed over a bunch of micro different microservices um, and then having Nginx stitch everything together. So if you had the routes specified in the individual handlers, then 
I suppose you could like generate documentation or something to gather the information back together. Or what I really want to do. Yeah. You don't have the exact route. You just have the handler. But that's, that's what I care. I don't care about the handler. I don't care what the handler is named. I care about the route. Um, what I really would like is the ability to take the definition from code and generate a like an open API spec. Like statically, not like a uh, a runtime. Oh, I can you know not like Swagger, whatever, where it's like generating something at runtime, but like a compile time. Yeah, but I think Utopia. In fact, all the things I looked at are kind of a runtime generation, not a compile time, uh, or build time, or prior to having a thing deployed time generation of an open API spec or um, some kind of code gen would be okay if it could automatically stitch the right handler names and like generate something like this that'd be okay too but I'm pretty sure when I looked at utopia and all those other things thank you by the way for for this example that really clarifies what, what we're talking about. But I'm pretty sure that when I looked at all of the things that are available in Rust, so be, uh, you make a separate CLI binary, which just spin up the server and just prints the, yeah, I could do that. Why, why is there not um, a thing to just do that? Sure. So everyone, everyone who wants to do that just has to do it themselves. It seems like something that, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I, maybe I should, uh, maybe I should do that and just create a separate repo that has just that command. Sure. So, uh, it's been, about an hour, and so I like to take a break every hour so that uh, I keep the circulation of my legs going and uh, go get some water, all that stuff. Is this public? Yes. This is, uh, um, here. I, I, do I have a, a GitHub command? Nope. Uh, commands? <laughs> I thought it, oh, um, I bet my bot is not running. Oh, you found it? Cool. That is it. I don't think I have any forks yet, so that'd be it. Every once in a while, Streamlabs bot likes to just like stop doing things. And so I go and kick it. Let me go see about that. Okay, there we go. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna wait until you're done with refactor, maybe add an open API sample with uh, Utopia as a PR. That'd be really cool. Um, I, I looked at it a couple times and I just, um, it was not the most pressing thing to do at the time, but it would be nice. All right, so. I'll be back in just a, a few minutes uh, and the refactor, the reorganization will continue. BRB.